I moved to this city six months ago. Uh, it was a little bit of a challenge at first because even though I have spent already a lot of time here when I was a teenage or during my childhood, every time you move to a new city, it's very different from the times you were there as a tourist only. And it was no different for me. And for those one who don't know, Brasilia was built in the 60s and it's a modernist wonder. It was built as an effort to bring more um, urbanization and industrialization to this side of the country. The city was designed by Lucio Costa and Niemeyer. Niemeyer was a modernist architecture. He was very famous for his lightness and curves and everything. And he brought a lot of it to the city. It's a very different place to be because as many, uh, different from many other cities that we know, this, this one, Brasilia, didn't have an organic growth. It was planned out and everything had a place to be everything is has a, an aesthetic to it if you want to build something uh, if you want to build something in Brasilia there are rules and everything else so this was a great starting point for me uh, to make this garment of this episode because I always wanted to show you guys how I transform architecture shapes into clothing and um, living here in Brasilia, surrounded by modernist architecture and having the channel, it was a perfect opportunity. So, um, this, this video is going to be a little different from the other ones and because I'm going to focus on the creation part. And that's how, that's what I'm going to start showing for you guys now. <laughs> National Theater and there's like this there's like this nice pattern of concrete and structure and glass that I really love I think I actually found my inspiration right here I like the shapes I like that it has many levels it's definitely something I can work with and I think that's it it's definitely not the first time I'm gonna work with that I I uh, have done this before like five times already. I made collections to my when I used to have my brand. I have worked with the the shapes of Zaha Hadid already. I have worked with the the sh buildings of Tadawandu too. So I wasn't a stranger to the technique, but every time you have a new building, it's a new challenge. So this uh, phase that I have already taken the pictures, I went to the place, I saw it, and I selected one, two, or three, uh, four tops uh, pictures. What I tried to do is to capture the essence at first. I just start drawing um, the, the shapes that the building gives like it's more about what it it makes you feel when you look at it like that shape that stands from the distance and you can actually see it from afar and you try to understand the the whole poetic the visual poetic of the building you try to understand uh what the architecture wanted with that and here I understand and I see that Nehemiah thought this to be, you can see it up front and then he has like this idea right here. It goes like this, it progresses. If you look at up front you have this visual here, like it's a bunch of triangular concrete blocks that gets thinner at the the base and it has it, it does like this so this is the the idea the flow the 
the way your eyes perceive it. And then you have these little plates of glass here. It's like windows. They're actually not like this. They're straight. They're like this. And from this first drafts, I start looking for shapes. I do it, I design it, and I I draw it over and over and over again until I made it better and until I can see something that can go to a garment that can I, I can put in a in a in a drawing of a person. Like this. This could give me something. Here I use something, I pay attention to something that's very important to me about the outcome. I pay attention and I take care at this part. So not only it can resemble it can resemble the shape, but it can also like give that feel. So here I have something that it's kind of brutal, even though Usually Nehemiah's constructions are very light and, and curvy. This is it's kind of brutal. Uh, there's the exposed concrete and glass, so it's like it's harsh. It's harsh and it cannot be like softy or very delicate. Oh, oh okay, it's gonna be recording. Or very delicate. So I have to keep this in mind.
guys, it's 11, I guess. No, it's midnight. It's past midnight already. Um, I was watching uh, a TV series and I had this idea. I was thinking about the building because there are some architecture shots in that series that I was watching. And I was talking to a friend about architecture and I thought of something for the design and I want to try it. I think it's going to work and I wanted to share this here. So it was like in the middle of the night and I started sketching because I had this, I remembered that I was obsessed with uh, um, a kimono. I've been saving kimono pictures to my Pinterest and I put the ideas together. I got the lines from the building in a kimono. Uh, I decided to make it gray. I wanted to buy a gray fabric long big sleeves very relaxed shape it would be much simpler than the the, the 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 jackets i was trying to design before it would be much easier to wear with the things i have in my wardrobe and i was extremely happy and excited with the sketch i was already excited for the next day uh the funny part of this is that i never wake up at night Try having ideas. I'm always so tired at night that all I want to do is just get some sleep But it was very really nice that I managed to film this part because I Usually have my ideas in the morning. I usually work my best in the morning and this was an unexpected turning of events uh, so I really like the kimono idea and right after that right after on the other day from the the image from the filming that I woke up in the middle of the night I went to my studio to start the pattern. The trickiest part of pattern making here is the the um, getting what you designed on the paper and making it work on the real world on the pattern. Because whenever you're creating on your sketchbook, it's really easy. You just design there. Everything's going to work. Everything's going to look pretty. It's the imaginary world there on your paper. But whenever you get the lines and the feelings and everything you created on the paper to put it on the brown paper, it's a little bit of a challenge. So I wanted these lines to look exactly like the theater. I wanted people to be able to understand what I... I created and when I say oh this was inspired by that um, and I took some time to look at the patterns look at the drawing and understand and drawing the lines so then so they are going so they're gonna look exactly like I wanted and exactly like the building I was inspired to and I pay a lot of attention to separating I pay a lot of attention separating things and preparing them to sew uh, it's really tricky here because a lot of, of the finishing is going to be made with black satin bias tape and I have to be very careful. I pin everything before I sew and I separate everything in order I'm gonna get to sew and I start sewing. I had to do it in baby steps. I'm not used to this fabric. I'm not used to this kind of finishing and it took me a while but I, I managed to do it very well. Here's how you make a bias tape finishing. This is the part of the sewing. This is where I sewed the fabric together. And the black is what we call the bias tape. And then you turn it around and then you sew it again. And then that's how it looks very beautiful from the inside. I do this with every seam of the piece, except from the one around the armhole. Because even though this finishing is very nice, I love it. You have to be careful because it gets the, the fabric very structured. Because if you think about it, you don't have just two pieces of fabric sewn together anymore. You have like four and two or three different seams. So it gets, uh, um, it gets a bit rigid. A dropped shoulder effect and then right here around the armhole you have the bias tape sewed together. It's going to look stiff. It's not going to look relaxed and nice and comfortable like a kimono is supposed to. So instead of that, uh, the only place I didn't put the bias tape inside 
was the armhole, which I used my overlock sewing machine to finish around. And I think after I finished the sewing of this part, it was basically done. This took me three weeks and a half to finish. Um, I love the result. It's gray, it's heavy as I wanted it to look. It's ginormous, it's really big, oversized. I really love the result. I'm very proud that I managed to show you guys the way of making clothes that I really love. I think it's very precious and, and unique when you're able to get um, images and objects and symbols that are outside of the fashion world and then bring it to the fashion world. I think it's really close for you. It's the way that gets you close to reaching something unique and, and, and amazing. And I hope you guys liked this piece and the video as much as I do. Thank you very much for those ones who watched up to here. Don't forget to subscribe. The more subscribers I have, the, more, the, the farther this video is gonna go. Thank you again, and I see you all next week with Millennial Fashion Project number four. Bye. It's right. It's